Hey, good morning everyone. Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. Today I'm going to start a series of June garden updates. And I'm going to show you the various gardens here I have on my nine plus acres property, about half of which is wooded. And I have been, over these two and a half years, carving out more and more territory to grow flowers and vegetables and perennials, fruit trees, and so forth. So today I'm starting with part one, which is this side garden. It's 1,200 square feet. We carved it out of the kind of a flat area beside the house. The house is right here. It's not flat. I live on a hill. They actually carved out this flat area going up this hill to put the house here and the shop. Everything is a hillside and it's very, very rocky. So it presents its challenges. It's not farmland. But let's go inside the side garden, as I call it, affectionately, and see what's growing. The big story there is volunteer versus what I've planted. Now, in last year and the year before, I grew cucurbits in here. Cucumbers, melons, and winter squash and watermelons. Because summer before last, this was my only garden. Last year, I added the big garden down below. It would be impossible for me, anyway, to cover all of my various garden areas in one video. So today we'll take the side garden, then we'll do the lower garden. Hopefully in, in a couple of days it'll be ready for its close-up. Then the raised bed garden. Of course, I have my flower garden and my vineyard, and I grow citrus trees on my back porch in the summer. So. I've got a lot going on here. It's way more than I can handle. I'm trying to do the best I can and that's all that we can do. I had a real desire to try to grow a large portion of my food when I moved here. And you know, I've been living in the city in very small spaces. In fact, my channel is eight years of very, very tiny garden in LA. And when I got to this place, I thought, wow, let's see what's possible. I don't even know what I can manage, who I can get to help me, but I just want to do everything that I can do while I'm physically able. And this year I said, okay, really, I'm going for it. I have worked so hard with very little help this year, so we'll see how, how I do, you know, but let's go inside. It's about 6.30 in the morning and the sun has not come over the trees. It's about 60 degrees going up to 80 today. And here is the overview. You see that bee is going after the plantain, that's narrow leaf plantain in bloom. In fact, because I don't have flowers for pollinators growing in here, all of this plantain came up when I tilled everything back to the fencing. You know, there's just a little bit of row here and it's just exploded out. It needs to be cut back more. I want to collect some of this red clover and dry it. But what happens with red clover is powdery mildew. So. I have got these same things growing all the way around and it's great for the pollinators so and it's not really in my way so I'm leaving it. All of these watermelons back here are volunteers. I have at least 20 plants and I know that the absolute tastiest watermelon that we broke open last year was from this garden. So it was decided very quickly 
that I would just go with this because I had not gotten around to planting any cucurbits by April. And <laughs> so as soon as this gar the whole garden got tilled, all of these came up and and Randy happened my a helper from last year and this year he is he's done some tilling, he's done a lot of heavy lifting. He was here and he said reposition these into a row right now and I didn't get it done right then and so by the time he came back a week later he said well it's too late now you're gonna have to leave them right where they are <laughs> I go, okay so I'll take you over and uh, for a closer look of course you don't know you know it's watermelon but you don't know which watermelon it is so Hopefully it's the really good tasty one. And the melons that I grew here were, there was one that was good. I think there was a cantaloupe that grew in here and it was really good. And then the other melons were melons I had been growing for a few years. Didn't necessarily love them. Didn't really eat them that much. One rotted here, one rotted there. And then all of a sudden you've got a lot of seeds in the ground. Now this garden was planted in black mustard cover crop. And so you'll still see that popping up here and there. And much of it I let go to flowers, so it dropped its seeds. Mustard is really great cover crop to build soil. I've got the pea trellis, and I've got a lot of volunteers that came up around the pea trellis. What we did the day, Jack was here that day, he helped me uh, put it together, and then I planted the seeds and then put down hay just kind of in the corner so that weeds wouldn't come up. And then of course the rest of it was covered with cover crop. So when I finally got it all tilled and everything, you know, after that, all of these watermelon and melons started popping up. And along the pea trellis, there are at least two tomatoes, uh, some big squash, I don't know what it is. And it, 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 it kind of looks like kushaw leaves, kushaw, but I don't think I grew, yeah, I did grow kushaw here. I grew everything in here. It's amazing what I had packed in here. And when I got the big garden, you know, suddenly the pressure was off to absolutely fill every square inch of this place. You know, it's really remarkable how many problems I've had with so many things. I have had to replant and replant and replant all year. I had to replant the English peas or the snap peas, snow peas. I've had to replant bean seed. I've had to replant corn. I've lost count. I've had to replant the okra. It's just incredible. I don't know what the problem is. But over here, in front of this collection of volunteers and dying peas, which need to be pulled out, I planted about, let's see, 25 pepper plants and two of them died. I had one volunteer tomato and that died. I had basil and that died. So much depends upon weather. We had all those late freezes and couldn't really get into the garden and get things going. And then suddenly we had drought in May. I mean, it, it, May into June, we just had weeks of no rain. So I've had to do a lot of watering, but you know, you need to water almost every day when you've got temperatures over 80. So that hasn't happened. So it's, really been challenging <laughs> but you know I, you just deal with it you know if your mission is to do it you just keep working until you do it or you don't do it and if you've done the best that you can do then you have to be satisfied with that this side over here we added a lot of good garden soil the first year and then the last year to the right of me where I have the corn now. We added a lot of good soil last year. So let's just, let's just, out of curiosity, it rained two days ago. Let's just see how far down you've got to go to hit some moisture. Well, this is what's frustrating is when it does rain, it washes all the good stuff off. So two inches down, I feel like I'm running into clay. So of course that's holding moisture. 
But look at the condition of these peppers. Some look better than others. This is a volunteer melon, and so is this. And this has the kind of polka dots on the squash-like kusha. I'm not sure it's going to push over this tomato that's in here. That's a volunteer. And look at this clover which volunteered in here, and it's absolutely covered. It looks like Christmas. Oh, and look, I've got a really healthy looking tomato volunteer here. All these peas have to come out. I'm going to save the seeds. Uh, that beeping is a mold deterrent, which I don't know if it really works. <laughs> this is anise hyssop. I had about 25 plants that volunteered and I separated them all and I planted them all over the garden and I absolutely love it. It came back in the lower garden and you know after last year and it's fantastic. So this is plantain. Looks like a lot of the bloom has fallen off. I'm gonna need to get in here and that's anise hyssop. So back here this is the eight foot sunflower and it looks like there's going to be a flower up there but <laughs> it's so high over my head I don't know if I'll be able to photograph it okay look what we've got here that looks like a butternut I don't know though I did grow butternut I grew all kinds of things in here so I did put hay down, which has suppressed some of the weeds. This is tall purslane. Believe it or not, I actually seeded this and grew this. I had the seeds. And the purslane that grows along the ground, it's kind of grows kind of flat with kind of the stems are kind of reddish. The tall purslane is green and gets tall. And it's Pretty much, I know it's good for you, but it's pretty much of a nuisance. Looks like we've got something else happening right here. So I'm going to get in here and clean up all the peas. There's more purslane right there. In front of that, right there. In front of that um, bamboo. And there's a tomato right behind it. Right in there. It's a tomato. So this row was dedicated to Daryl because these were his seeds. This is the red calico lima bean. But as you can see, I think I only have five or six that came up. Now I went back and I popped in the red Worcestershire, Worcester, Worcestershire uh, red Indian bean, which is also a lima bean. Very similar. And that has not come up either. So down here I planted the uh, rattlesnake pole bean that Daryl gave me and these came up right away but these big gaps. So I came along with my rattlesnake pole beans and put them in here and none of that has come up. So it's, it's kind of crazy. I put a lot of good garden soil in a mound here. When the rains come they wash down around behind this because it's lower and it goes right out underneath the fence over there. So some of this soil just got washed out so I put these boards with these stakes here to kind of so that I could build it up. So <laughs> I had this really good built up soil I thought and um, it may just be, be because it it dries out too fast you know. You put things in a mound and the water just, I would just have to probably water it twice a day. And maybe they can still pop up. I don't know. Here's a volunteer watermelon. With a lot of weeds around it. That's hairy, hairy crabgrass. And I'm not going to pull it out with my hand. But I've pulled out much with my hand. So this is the black mustard. Gone to seed. And it was along the side. So mustard is supposed to actually help the soil help you uh, in, in the years following 
it's uh, supposed to help with plant diseases and just to build soil so this is the whatever it is all the seeds are in the ground now look at that it may just be this stuff although the, this doesn't have a le much of a leaf well anyway there's going to be a lot of seeds of it let's see what is it huh I'm not sure what that is here are the watermelons and you think you ask you might ask why haven't I filled all this up well one is time and two is with 20, I counted 20 the other day, with 20 watermelon plants, those vines could fill up this entire space. I actually broke down and bought about six plants from a box store. This one, actually I think these two might be volunteers because they're very close together. And then I did plant that one that I purchased. And I, I know that I also bought those two, two peppers that I purchased. But these are all my peppers, small and just not really growing that much. This is one of the most pervasive weeds. It's everywhere. Looks a lot like basil, grow, you know, when it first comes up. This is the mustard when it first comes up. Hairy crabgrass, one of my top five weeds. But you see the one, the plant I just pulled out? I'll put the name on the screen because I've temporarily forgotten it, but it, get, it turns into a big, big plant, you know? That's more of the mustard coming up. These are all volunteers that were repositioned into a row. These are melons, and I have no idea which one. Okay, this is my flower corn. And this was given to me, this seed was given to me by my longtime fan. He has been working on it, he calls it Wapsi. And I'll talk more about that if I get success, because I'll be trying to grind the corn if I get corn. This particular spot, like I said, Randy must have added this much good soil in this spot last year. So that's where you wanna grow your corn, where, where it's the best, most fertile, rich soil. Corn is a heavy feeder. I've learned this lesson the hard way, you know, because I don't have those soils built up enough yet. I would say I had about 90%, maybe a little 92% germination. So for me, <laughs> for my track record with corn, that's really good. I have taken, uh, let's see, about two weeks ago, I side dressed the sides with the fertilizer and then I banked them up. These rows are very tight. I can't get a cultivator in there, so it's just a question of shoveling it and putting along the side. So it needs banking up more, and it needs more fertilizer, and it needs more water because we just discovered that even though this has been rained on, it can't, you know, the top compacts down. You get two days of 80 degree sun, and it's 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 dry. <laughs> This is a watermelon volunteer, and I've worked around it and tried to take care of it. I thought, it's right on the edge. It'll be fine. It'll grow out this way. I'll direct it to grow out this way. But that storm we had kind of knocked it down and almost looks broken. I hope not. And there are two potatoes here because in the spring, I actually planted two rows of potatoes right here and I don't know what happened, they just <laughs> dissolved into the earth and they started coming up and I said, you know what, I still have to plant corn here so I'll work around it and we'll see what we get. The only other thing I want to talk about today is this bean trellis. And if you look back at OAG, you know our friend Charles at OAG channel, Old Alabama Gardener channel, uh, he and I became friends. I went to see him twice. I had. I think four videos on my channel with OAG. He was such a treasure. Anyway, he has instructions on one of his videos how to make this particular bean trellis. 
and I absolutely love it. I had uh, the man who worked for me in 21 build it. And it, in, in 21, it was covered, absolutely covered. That's, you know, this was the only garden I had, and so I crammed every, it's just my, it's in my MO in life, is to cram everything in. I used to say to my sons when I'd be, I'd be, you know, racing them to soccer practice or tennis practice, and, and then I would drop somebody off, and then I would go to an audition, and then I would, then I would go home, and I would, I would go to a class, and then, and then they would go to a class. I was just like, I was just, and, and I just said, I want you to put on my gravestone. She crammed it in. She crammed it all in. And um, anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I have a lot more things to cram in to this, uh, to this garden space. I need to give it some TLC. And uh, uh, I have my son coming tomorrow to help me for three days, but I, I you know, this is probably not, I need him for the big stuff. <laughs> I knew very well by the time I set up this garden that I had to protect it. And I thought, well, it's beside the house, the opposite side. You don't really see it well, that much from the road. And so, you know, fences are ugly. It's just the reality, fences are ugly. And so I bought this netting type fencing from, I think it's deer, deerfence.com. I had it put up, I had eight foot t-post put up and it zip tied to it uh, but there's a drop off there's a slope and you know when you're doing a fence you have to consider your drop down because this netting doesn't stretch so <laughs> they were having to kind of wrap around in the lowest corner so you know think about that when you're doing your fencing um, Maybe you start high, you start lower and you go higher, you know, you buy an eight foot fence and you start it at seven feet and you split the bottom. That's what we actually did here. This was seven and a half foot fencing and I brought six inches down on the ground and covered the whole thing with cardboard and the netting splayed out over that. And then there's so many rocks came out of this garden. We just put rocks all around to hold it down. Now I'm noticing some holes around the bottom down here, and I'm thinking maybe a weed whacker did that because it's just it's too many and it's this way, and I think that's what happened. So that needs to be patched. But you know you have to protect your garden from deer. You can you can go to all this work and they can come in and clean you out in one night. So it's just a shame to have to put fences around everything because you want to be able to sit out in your porch and look at your gardens and not be looking at these, I don't know why they put these, the white at the top of the T-post. You know, if they could just be solid green, it would kind of blend in, you know, more. If you want to get a crop, fencing is a reality. This corn that Mark has developed over a number of years is a short season. It matures at five feet. So I'm hopeful that I'm gonna get something good. I don't see any army worms in there. The first year my corn got wiped out here, it was on that side, and it, they all got army worm. It was heartbreaking. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of beans in here. I really need to put another row of beans or something in here <laughs> and potatoes. I don't have a ton of stuff growing in here, but I have melons, peppers, squash, watermelon, corn, pe I said peppers, right? <laughs> and I have one sunflower, one giant sunflower, um, a lot of um, plantain and clover and other weeds. Hairy buttercup is another one. That's the little yellow flowers uh, around the edges. And all of those volunteers, I've got some mustard, and purslane and I think there's actually a cucumber over there. We're gonna go check. I forgot about it. <laughs> I actually bought it and planted it uh, on the against the netting. Let's go check on that. And tomato. I don't even see that cucumber. 
I will say do not bother with that flimsy deer netting when you're building a fence. You need fencing because the first year had the eight footers there and just used that lightweight deer netting. All that had to come off and be replaced again last year. So don't, <laughs> you're not saving any money, trust me, if you use that lightweight. Now, if you have some little thing, maybe you can get by with that really lightweight stuff, but what you need is something substantial that will last over time so that you don't have to rebuild your structures every year. I can't wait for that moment. <laughs> You'll notice all those sandbags around this corner. Well, this corner happens to be lower than obviously the, the far corner over there. And a lot of water comes down this hill and it pools in this area and then it, it's easy flow into washing out the soil in the garden. So I did that earlier, you know, in April. I packed up these sandbags here to hopefully hold back some of that water. And then also I had that ditch dug up there to keep some pressure off of this. Um, but there's just a lot of water in Tennessee. <laughs> it's just not coming down from the sky and raining on our garden for some strange reason. You see that sun coming, just pipe, piping through and how, how the color of the frame is so much warmer. Thank you, sun. <laughs> hey, everybody, uh, my plans for this particular garden, I'm going to put some grow bags of potatoes in here so that I can keep the potato growing going. And I've, I've got a weed, obviously. I've got to bank this up, the corn, and put more fertilizer, and then I want to put hay down. I've got the hay sitting over here to suppress some of these weeds. I want to fill all the rows in between the rows with hay and water and this a lot, a lot to do. So thank you so much for joining me on this part one of my June garden tour. I hope you subscribe. If you haven't already, click the bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode. And I hope what I'm doing here interests you and I hope it inspires you in some way to get out there, grow your own food, no matter how much space you have. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. Yes, all those rocks came out of the garden. And many more. <laughs>